Good morning, and thank you for joining us on this Veterans Day as we show our appreciation and indebtedness to the men and women who have served in our armed forces. I'm Rita Meinskow, Chair of the Walpole Veterans Services Committee. Once again, we find ourselves on opposing sides of the screen. This is not what we had planned for, and it's certainly not what we had hoped for. After thoughtful consideration to the re recent increase in COVID cases, consideration of the governor's recommendations, and in discussion with the Walpole Board of Health, it was agreed that the health and the safety of our residents is the priority. We all very much look forward to the day when we can once again gather on our common with our friends and neighbors, as we always have and as we always should. Until that time comes, as we said on Memorial Day, we will not let this pandemic stop us from honoring our veterans. Before we begin our ceremony, I would like to invite Jennifer Healy, a member of the Junior Women's Club of Walpole, to the podium. These remarkable women do so much to support our community and to support our veterans. And this pandemic is no match for their perseverance or tenacity. Jennifer? Thank you, Rita. The Junior Women's Club is honored to participate today and thank you very much for including us. Um, November is typically a month when what we do is run a fundraiser with portions of the proceeds going to the Veterans Association. And since we are unable to hold our typical beer and wine tasting, um, what we are doing this year instead is running a calendar raffle. So for every day during the month of November, we will be raffling off a prize. Donations from the community have made this possible. We've got lots of gift certificates to restaurants, wine, we've got grocery store gift certificates, lots of great prizes that you could take advantage of for yourself or even use for holiday gifts. So if you are interested in participating, you can go to the Junior Women's Club website and that's thejwcw.org and you'll find the information to purchase your tickets there and help us support the Veterans Association. So Rita, thank you very much. Again, just an amazing group of women. Thank you. Could I please have David Ferrara come to the podium for the invocation? Almighty God, author and champion of all life, we ask that your blessing may prevail upon us as we gather here today. We are grateful for this opportunity to be able to stand here in freedom to assemble and honor the veterans of our nation's armed forces. May we forever remember our veterans that have paved the way to preserve our freedoms. We ask for abundant blessing of life, liberty, and justice for all. May our observance remind us of our freedom that comes ultimately from you and through those that have faithfully served this country and its people. Bless the family and friends of those we honor today and bless the veterans who have come with memories, stories, and tears to enrich this day. Amen. And now we will do the Pledge of Allegiance from Boy Scout Troop 44. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
I would now like to introduce our honorary guest speaker, retired Army Colonel Thomas Stewart. Tom was born and grew up in the town of Walpole. He is currently the Associate Dean of the Graduate School and Assistant Professor of Leadership at Nichols College in Dudley, Massachusetts. He retired in September 2019 as Colonel after serving 31 years as an Army officer. His previous military assignments in the Massachusetts Army National Guard were Director of the Joint Staff, Director of Operations, Director of Logistics, Assistant Chief of Staff, and from 2011 to 2012 served on a combat deployment in Afghanistan as Commander of the 1st 182nd Infantry in Camp Phoenix in the capital city of Kabul. Tom earned a Master's of Strategic Studies from the United States Army War College, Carlisle, Pennsylvania in 2014, an MBA from Nichols College in 2011, and is a graduate of Harvard's University Leadership and Homeland Security Program. Please welcome retired Army Colonel Thomas Stewart. Thank you, Rita. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As many of you know, it's customary in military ceremonies to go through a series of introductions of distinguished guests, but I'm not going to do that this morning. It's humbling to see the veterans and so many public servants that are present for today. You truly are the distinguished guests today, and thank you for coming out for this important event and celebrating our traditions with us. Walpole has always been a very patriotic community that provides so much support to its veterans. And it's also produced a number of veterans. Walpole residents had a big role within the birth of our nation during the Revolutionary War. Interesting historical records in the town library show Walpole assuming the burdens and the sacrifices that are required to earn and maintain a safe and secure and free nation. The battles of Lexington and Concord on April 19, 1775, saw 157 Walpole residents out of a population of 800 serve. You may recognize these citizen soldiers as our town's streets and ponds are named after them. Names like Seth Bullard, Joshua and Oliver Clapp, Andrew Willett, Colonel John Smith, and Nathaniel Hale. Walpole and our nation are forever grateful for their service and sacrifices. Fast forward to November 11th, 1919. Our nation held its first Veterans Day celebration, known them then as Armistice Day. It was the first anniversary of the end of the Great War, which we all know as World War I. But it wasn't until 1938 that Veterans Day became a national holiday for the people of our nation to rally and show thanks to the veterans that served the greater cause than themselves. Fast forward again to the Vietnam War, where Walpole residents, PFC Brian Collins, 2nd Lieutenant Paul Fitzgibbons, and PFC Richard Drake, known as Charlie Drake. They sacrificed their lives there. And 1st Lieutenant Andrew Basovich, a Walpole veteran who selflessly gave his life in service during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Remember these veterans when you have to decide to say the Pledge of Allegiance or stand for the passing of the American flag. America is a great nation, and Walpole a great community, full of service and sacrifices from everyone. Those four gentlemen get celebrated on Veterans Day and Memorial Day. But unlike Memorial Day, Veterans, Veterans Day pays tribute to all American veterans who served their country honorably during war or peacetime. 101 years and quite a few generations have passed since our Revolutionary War veterans, Clapp, Bullard, Smith, Hale, and Willett, and many others who served. But today there are images, many images of what veterans look like. What does a veteran look like to you? Moms can't always picture their own baby go, going off and becoming a veteran by serving the military. That's always a job for someone else. A well done commercial on TV a couple weeks ago shows a mom walking through the foggy woods in the middle of the night in her bathrobe looking for future Michael, her son in the future, of course. She finds future Michael lying on the ground in an army uniform, camouflage ghillie suit, and she says, Michael, why are you doing this? 
You can do anything you want to. Why this? The young man, a future veteran, says he doesn't want to be stuck behind a desk and he wants to serve his country. And she says, but you're all alone out there. And he says, I won't be alone, Mom, as his eight squad mates also came up live, stand up out of the dusk. Look, and, and Michael tells his mom that he'll be part of a team, making an impact. So what do you say, Mom, he says. And then the commercial snaps to present Michael and present Mom in their home. And the mom, she looks at her son proudly due to his commitment to something bigger than himself. Mom's initial hesitation is understandable. This is the first time that her son will commit to something other than mowing the lawn once a week. But in the end, she even understands that Michael has a lot to gain, personally and professionally, of what will become his basic fabric of the values, the bedrock of what and who he is. In July of 2019, I attended the Boston Pops rehearsal at the Esplanade. It was the night before their big July 4th show. My family seats were near the field artillery cannons that belonged to the 101st Field Artillery, Massachusetts Army National Guard. I met the 23-year-old platoon leader. She was one of the first young ladies in the United States Army assigned to a combat arms unit. She was about five feet tall, a Boston University graduate, and a nurse in Boston. And she also led a platoon of about 45 field artillery soldiers whose job it is to put indirect fire on top of the enemy. Or, in the case of that evening, was to provide the 13-gun salute ceremoniously to the 1812 overture played by the Boston Pops. She was extremely brilliant, well-spoken, and a positive role model for all men and women. She is a veteran. I'm about one year and 32 days into retirement from service in the Army, which spanned 31 years, 25 of it active duty in the Massachusetts Army National Guard. And I've reflected a lot on the qualities of a veteran that I may have taken for granted until now that I'm not always around them on a daily basis. Veterans have similar values in the bedrock of what and who we are, priorities. Veterans have resilience. Resilience for any situation or hardship. From those initial basic training orders that tell a young man or a woman to report to Fort Benning, Georgia on 29 May, no later than 0700, with accompanying plane ticket from Boston to Atlanta. But they don't tell you how you're going to get from Atlanta to Columbus, what building to report to, or who are you going to report to. The resilience it takes to not know until the last minute and being comfortable with it. Trust the process, and which leads to the next value. Veterans are agile. They can handle shifts in the situation, the environment, and the people, and they can make something out of it. They don't always need pure predictability, which leads, again, to the next value. Veterans value the ability to keep it calm, cool, and relaxed, even during chaotic events. In February 2012, my battalion, the 182nd Infantry, was in Afghanistan. I was in Kabul, the capital city at the time, and Afghanistan as a nation was going through a period of unrest against all foreigners, and we were ordered, as all U.S. units were ordered, not to leave their base for a period of time. During that time, my base came under attack, literally had thousands of Afghans, along with Taliban and Haqqani network, trying to envelop and get into our base. I was responsible for the security of that base, and my guys were guarding the entrance with limited cover, and they were getting shots fired on them from somewhere within the crowds. But they refused to pull back to a safer location, for that would mean free access onto our base for the thousands trying to storm it. As I managed our actions and our response from our base defense operations center, one of my operations captain, captains said, bad news, sir, the base is under attack, and they're all wearing Walpole Rebels sweatshirts and knit hats. Two weeks before that chaotic event, we had done a humanitarian assistance mission in the same tribal village. And through the help of the Connor family and many other Walpole residents, we distributed Walpole uh, boot, I'm sorry, we distributed winter boots for the children and warm white Walpole High School athletic sweatshirts and knit hats to these same local people. The Brigade Sergeant Major from Georgia was a member of the higher command and he sat in our operations center to observe us 
during each of the chaotic missions that we were faced with. He ended up paying us a compliment. He said that as the situation got more dangerous, our group were, became more calm, cool, collected, and even told jokes while being under attack. Lastly, and most importantly, the value deeply ingrained in all veterans is selfless service. Veterans serve the greater good, even if it means their own personal interests have to take a back seat or not be considered at all. As a veteran, you'd agree that the organization's interests are more important than your own. Herb Brooks was the coach of the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team. He said it best, and we follow it. The name on the front of the jersey, the team name, is a hell of a lot more important than the name on the back of the jersey, your own name. With that, I'd like to close by thanking all our veterans for standing up for something a lot larger than yourselves. Don't ever lose those values you've gained through your service. And Walpole appreciates you and has always stood by every one of our veterans from the Revolutionary War through Vietnam, Iraq, and my own unit's deployment in Afghanistan. Thank you, Walpole. You're truly a great town for any veteran to call home. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for coming. My name is John Robinson, United States Army veteran and member of the Walpole Veterans Committee. Now we will do the introduction of the roll call and the roll call itself, which will name off those brothers and sisters we have lost since Memorial Day. Additionally, I will be joined by Henry Scanzio, 97-year-old Army veteran of World War II. William Powers. Lawrence Parente, Arthur Baraki, John Pryor, Richard Sotir, John Piasecki, John Molloy, Debbie Kulbach, Armand Dubois, David Smith. Harry Gilmore, Edward Bonasandri, Philip Pinot, Leo Sapkinski, William Burt, William Bell, Jesse Nubai, Roy Forget, Jean Lavanchi, Thomas Gagnon. May they rest in peace. Hey everybody.
Good day, everyone. I pray this day finds you all well. My name is Donna Summers. Um, I'd like to speak a little bit today about a subject. First of all, I want to say Veterans Day for myself is very proud day, but also a sad day. My grand, my paternal grandfather, uh, his parents came from Ireland to England and then to the United States. Um, to serve in World War II. My maternal grandfather came through Ellis Island uh, from Lithuania and served in World War I and World War II. I'm the proud mom. I joined the Army right out of high school here in Walpole. And I'm the proud mom of three children. My two boys, uh, one, my oldest son, Derek, graduated, uh, just retired rather from the Army and is a veteran of the uh, Afghanistan war and um, Iraq. My youngest son uh, just retired um, from the Air Force and had two tours overseas, three tours overseas. Um, my daughter was a, a Gulf War era veteran who I lost to suicide three years ago. Um, my lovely daughter would have been 44 this year. Um, she was an Army veteran. She was an MP, Gulf War era. This is why today I'd like to speak a little bit about um, suicide in the military and amongst our veterans. <sighs> Washington report shows that this year, since the coronavirus, military suicides are up 20%. Also, incidents of violence behavior has spiked as service members struggle under COVID-19. War zone deployments, national disasters, and the civil unrest. Suicide rate for veterans is 1.5 times higher than the general population. Female veterans, this breaks my heart, is 2.5 times higher than for a regular adult woman. Every one of us needs to be aware of those around us. The elderly, the ill neighbor next door, those alone, especially, make a phone call, um, go next door, be aware of the people around you and, and what is happening. Um, I did want to mention that we are still reeling from the Holyoke and the people uh, the veterans in Holyoke are still suffering. And we will get through this, windy day or not, because Veterans Day must be told. So I would like everybody to please be aware of the 1-800 number I have here of the Veterans Crisis Line in Massachusetts. Um, you, you can even just call 911 and they will connect you to any hotline. You can call your VA and the first prompt that comes on is if you're having a crisis, please push this button. Um, and let's all look out for one another. And don't just assume that your next door neighbor or the veteran down the street who says, you ask them how it's going and they say fine. The older veterans especially are a very proud generation. They will probably tell you they're fine, but they might be apt to respond if you just offer them this or that. And, hey, how about if I give you a phone call? And most of them I have found will say, yeah, sure, I'd love to talk. And if we all do that and pray, just let us pray for, to be thankful for what we have and for the veterans and their families 
that are still in need. And again, I want you to make note of the Veterans Crisis Hotline. Don't hesitate to give it out. I thank you. I am just very worried that with this pandemic and the uh, problems that are going on and the isolation that some of our veterans might fall through the cracks. Uh, my daughter was not found for two days. And if somebody maybe had said something, she could have gotten help. So please check on your neighbors and your fellow veterans. Thank you. for the closing benediction. Almighty God, as we prepare to go our separate ways today, help us to take with us an attitude worthy of your grace and sacrifice and of those that we honor today, our veterans. Amen. In closing, the Waffle BFW will not hold its traditional Veterans Day festivities due to the ongoing situation with COVID-19. I would like to thank the following for being part of this Veterans Day observation. Those of you that are watching this telecast, our guest speaker, retired Army Colonel Thomas Stewart, members of the WAPL Veterans Service Committee, the WAPL and Police Color Guard, the uh, Walpole Council of Aging for allowing us to use this place. Boy Scout Troop 44. Tamara Green of Walpole Media. Everyone at SOVA. Support Your Veterans Association for all that you do for our local veterans. The Walpole VFW Post 5188 firing detail. Mr. Henry Scanzio for your faithfulness and Jennifer Healy of the Junior Women's Club of Wapple for all you have done for this community and for us. And that is the close of our festivities today. Thank you.